When you have hair loss, it can be such a scary and deceivingly lonely place. But you know what? You're not alone. You are here with me. Welcome to the Alternative Hair Alchemist podcast. Hi, I'm Deborah Heim. I am a certified alternative hair specialist, a wig boutique owner, and wig wearer myself due to alopecia. And this is my tell it like it is take on all things alternative hair. I also happen to be a certified confidence coach, so I'm going to be sprinkling in some mindset hacks for good measure. So take a deep breath, sit back and relax, and listen to my favorite ways and my best advice on how I help others and help myself to rock that alternative hair. We're going to drop that shame and stigma. What is that about anyway? Now, let's do this. Welcome to this week's episode of the Alternative Hair Alchemist. This is Deborah Heim of Very Best Little Hair House and www.debrahim.com is my own personal website. And this week I want to talk about something that is near and dear to my heart, and that is the relationship between stress and hair loss. This week, I had a friend reach out to me because she is going through. She, of course, saw a doctor, which with any type of hair loss, I want to say that first, see a doctor because there are many, many causes. It might not be alopecia. It might not be stress-related hair loss. You always want the good care of a physician. I feel like I need to make that disclaimer, although we should all know it, but sometimes women are the last to take care of themselves. So by all means, see a doctor. Although it seems to me that when any type of hair loss is involved, the number one thing you want to know is why, as in why me? And hopefully they can find a cause. Sometimes they can't. Sometimes you get into extensive testing, what have you, and it can be costly. Uh, uh, That's just part of my personal story. But in any case, if you are having hair loss, don't let it stop you from trying whatever you need to do to feel better about yourself. And if that includes a a topper, alternative hair, well, that's what it's there for. I know there are some people that want to wait until their hair grows back, but I'll tell you, there's no better time for alternative hair than now. So when it comes to growing a good, full, healthy head of hair. The basics are the most important. And nobody really wants to hear about this because it's much easier to take a pill or what have you. But you must have a really good balanced diet and plenty, plenty of water. Now, everybody says that, but I am telling you, if you increase your water intake and you are not restrictive with your diet, you will see an improvement in your hair growth. The reason I mention diet is because nowadays there are so many restrictive type diets and people avoiding this or that, and just know that you want to check into that and have a really healthy, balanced diet. The another thing that you can do is meditation or anything that you just stop and give your brain a break. And I remember when I was told stress is affecting my hair loss and somebody suggested meditation, I was like, there's no way I can meditate. I'm too anxious or what have you. But let me tell you, if you can get into a practice, maybe your meditation would involve yoga, um, deep breathing, what have you, just simply getting into the habit of staying in the current moment, which is also referred to as mindfulness. If you're not worrying about the past and not predicting the future and you just enjoy the current moment, believe me, your life will get a lot better and the hair loss will slow down. And don't forget regular exercise. So with all of those good health practices, and I know people are like, no, 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 it can't be it. But trust me, I've been through it, and it does make a difference. In fact, I guess I'll just tell you my little story. 
I worked all my life as a nurse, which, as you can imagine, is quite stressful. So I also had the stress-related hair loss. So at the end of nursing, when I could no longer work as a nurse anymore and I opened the shop, I have alopecia areata, and I had permanent bald spots. But over the five years that I've been away from nursing, also started meditating, started staying as happy as I could, learning all of those techniques to choose my thoughts, my hair really has filled in. Even some of the permanent spots where I had traction alopecia from clips, it's really growing in quite well, especially this past year. I shave what I have left, and it's growing in so thick now that I thought I might just let it grow to see how it does. So I can tell you from my own experience, drastically changing my life, which not everybody could do, but you can do it just a little bit at a time. If there's something that's causing you stress, cut it out. If there's people that cause stress in your life, start choosing who you spend time with a little more carefully. Now, with some situations and you've got family members or whatever, some people are impossible to avoid. But in my case, I also had relationships that let's just say were less than healthy. And when I put a stop to that, life started to get better. So a lot of the times when I'm giving you encouragement to do a certain thing, trust me, I've been through it. And one of the most important things you can do is talk to somebody supportive. And I have people that come to the shop to book an appointment just to come and talk about hair loss or for an energy healing treatment. And don't rule out how much something like that, which is self-care or having a regular massage, can help to reduce the stress in your life. And in fact, massage, as in scalp massage, is the number one thing that can really help your hair grow in and just stimulating your scalp. And it's something that you can do every day in the shower. But scalp massage is the number one thing that they suggest when for natural remedies for hair loss. And I'm going to go through a list of a few of them that you can try at home. It was really interesting to research this. Some of these I have tried. Some of these I know have worked well for other people. So it's not going to hurt to give it a shot. And that's the thing. When you are having stress-related hair loss, it gets to you. When you look in the shower and it seems like the hair is falling out nonstop, the best thing you can do is not think about that. Now, how are you not going to think about it? You do that by doing proactive things. So when you do things for yourself or you do things that are going to potentially help your hair grow, that gets your mind off of it. And anytime you can raise your vibration by thinking happy thoughts and avoiding stressful ones, it's better for not only hair growth, but for you all over. So before I get to that, let me quickly explain in like plain language how stress can affect your hair growth. And it's like this. Your hair has a life cycle. There are four stages. It grows, it transitions, it rests, and it falls out. And by the way, the official term, if you go and get a diagnosis and they say it's stress-related hair loss that's acute, it's telogen effluvium. So that's the big Latin word for essentially hair shock. And basically what happens is your hair, as it's in the growing phase, will be essentially shocked. And it stops the growing stage and kicks it right into the resting stage. So that's why you will have more hair loss at one time if this goes on. Now, again, stress can just affect your hair growth, putting it a lot slower all the time. So, you know, I I know doctors don't ever want to admit it, but so many meds, so many lifestyle things that we do really do affect your hair growth. And that's just coming from me, not medical or anything. It's because I see it. I get calls from people in all walks of life. But you know what? 
almost everybody that comes to see me has a hectic, hectic life or they've got something medical going on. So I'm going to quickly run through the 10 suggestions that I was able to research that you can do to stimulate your own hair growth. Number one, I already mentioned it, scalp massage. Number two, aloe vera. I guess it contains en enzymes that will help promote hair growth. Uh, it reduces your scalp itching, and it can make your hair look smoother. So you're supposed to apply aloe vera gel directly to your scalp and leave it on for about an hour before washing. Next up, onion juice. It's rich in sulfur, so it can boost the collagen production reportedly and stimulate hair growth. You apply it to your scalp, leave it on for 15, 30 minutes, and then, of course, you're going to wash and rinse that thoroughly. Egg masks, this has been done for years. Eggs are packed with protein. That's the thinking behind that. Mix an egg with olive oil, put it on your hair, leave it on for 20 minutes before washing. And that certainly sounds like a good idea. Green tea, it's rich in antioxidants, so that can help prevent hair loss and stimulate hair growth. You can apply the warm green tea directly to your scalp or use it as a rinse after shampooing. And you can also drink it too. Essential oils, certain essential oils I know rosemary is one, but also lavender and peppermint might promote hair growth. You can mix a few drops of essential oil with a carrier oil. I know one of the popular ones for hair growth, and this is probably a suggestion 11, is castor oil. I know people personally that have had a good result with castor oil. But anyway, you mix your essential oils in a carrier oil, usually coconut or jojoba, and massage that directly into your scalp. And I'll tell you, the aromatherapy from essential oils is wonderful too. I really believe a couple whiffs of the rosemary oil might stimulate your hair growth, if nothing else, by relaxing you and making you in a positive mood. So give that a try. Henna is on my list. It doesn't only add color, but it strengthens and conditions your hair. So they use that as a treatment to improve hair health. Balanced diet. Already mentioned that. But you know, ensure that your diet has a lot of vitamins and minerals. It's so much better to get your vitamins and minerals from natural sources. Even the good vitamins just can't compare. You want to pay attention to biotin, ink, iron, zinc, and omega-3 fatty acids. Those nutrients are essential for your healthy hair growth. Next up, you want to avoid harsh styling. Use the good products on your hair. Avoid excessive heat styling. No tight hairstyles. Be careful with anything that pulls on your hair. Remember, traction alopecia. Harsh chemicals can also damage your hair as well as contribute to hair loss. And the last one is reduce stress. I love when I remember how I used to feel when people would say that to me, that it would help. And I just thought it was the most nuts thing in the world. But you know what? It really does have an effect. There's just no way around it. I have seen it, and I see it with other people. And one of the ways you can reduce stress is to talk to somebody supportive. So there are groups out there for people going through hair loss. You want to be careful because some of them, when you get into them, they just kind of want to vent and there's a difference between processing something going on and just continually keeping that vibration active by talking about it. So make sure you have some supportive place that you can discuss it. And if you can't find one, mine is the Wise Wig Advice Support Group on Facebook associated with the Very Best Little Hair House page. Now, in there... I try and put new things that come out as soon as possible, but it's a safe place that you can ask a question and be sure to get a reliable answer. So that's all I got for this week. Thank you for listening. And until next week, peace, love, and alternative. 
If you enjoyed this episode, you might like working with me one-on-one even better. You can check out the options at debraheim.com. You can find my shop at verybestlittlehairhouse.com. And don't forget my Wise Wig Advice and Support Group, also on Facebook. I'd love to hear from you. But until next time, peace, love, and alternative hair.